lot of people seem to believe that fossils take a very long time to form, thousands, millions of years in order to form, but the existence of a fossil by itself is actually proof that something happened very, very fast. When an organism dies, there's all parts of the environment that are trying to destroy it. There's the weather, there's erosion, there's scavengers and other animals that are going to come and tear apart your fossil. But as soon as the organism dies, if it's covered by sediment and protected from the environment, then the process of fossilization can start. And we know from modern examples that fossilization, as far as converting the bone or the shell into rock, can actually happen very, very fast, in a matter of months. Since we know that fossils have to form quickly in order to become fossils at all, we also know, therefore, that the rocks that the fossils are formed in must themselves have been formed quickly as well. So creationists who study the geological record and the geological column can agree with some of our evolutionary colleagues on something, the order of the fossils. But what we're going to disagree with is about the ages that my evolutionary colleagues ascribe to those rocks, not the order of them themselves. Charles Darwin said the fossil record would show evolution, but in fact, at the time, it didn't. And he predicted it would, but you know it doesn't. And the prediction that he made has not been borne out by research since. We've found millions of fossils, and we do not find the fine gradation of change of one basic kind to another. And in fact, it's a huge problem for the whole idea of evolution. It is the big level differences between animals, these phylum level differences, that should give us our best example of evolutionary transitions. You need more transitions in order to split from something like a jellyfish into something like an arthropod, like a lobster. It's precisely these big level differences that have the smallest amount of evidential basis for Darwinian evolution. One of the most intractable problems in paleontology is one of Darwin's own devising. When Darwin wrote The Origin of Species, he knew of a group of fossils low in the geological column called the Cambrian. Since Darwin believed that all animals shared common ancestors, he believed that the animals in the Cambrian must therefore have ancestors in the rocks below them. To put the Cambrian explosion in context, let's think of Earth history like a football field. On an old age system, the beginning of the Earth at one end zone is four and a half billion years ago and the present is at the other end zone. The Cambrian starts all the way across the field at the opposing team's 12 yard line and extends for one full yard. The Cambrian explosion though where we see the first appearance of all of these different animal body plants, these phylum level divisions, happens in just four inches. It's not even the whole yard. So in the four inches that is the Cambrian explosion, this narrow slice of time in geology, we have the first appearance of animals that are as different from each other as mollusks and clamshells from jellyfish. These are huge anatomical differences that are supposed to happen in a window of time where in other areas you're arguing about whether or not uh, humans and gorillas shared a common ancestor. A small difference anatomically compared to the huge body level uh, divisions that we see first appear in the Cambrian. But you know, there are no precursors to the Cambrian fauna in the Precambrian rocks. The Precambrian supposedly represents a couple of billion years of history, yet it shows nothing more than blue green algae and bacteria, maybe a few other things thrown in late in the Precambrian. So, one thing we hear a lot is that maybe the ancestors of the Cambrian fauna were, were soft bodies, so they didn't leave any remains behind to be fossilized. And Darwin, in The Origin of Species, he said, No organism wholly soft can be preserved. But that is nonsense, for even he knew fossil sand ripples and even raindrops were preserved in the rocks. And today, we have fossils of jellyfish, of worms, right from the fossil record. While the Cambrian explosion stands as strong evidence against evolutionary predictions, it's actually exactly what creationists would expect out of the fossil record. If Noah's flood created the bulk of our fossils and sedimentary rocks, then we would expect that as the flood starts in the ocean and drives its way on towards the continents, that it would pick up these marine ecosystems, burying them in sediment and driving them up onto the land where they would become fossilized and become sedimentary rocks. The thing about the Cambrian explosion that's so interesting is that when we look and see in those first four inches, when all these different animal phyla appear, it's a complex and complete ecosystem. This isn't a single organism that shows up and then later on another organism and then later another. It's an entire suite of organisms that were in one place, were catastrophically buried, and their remains were driven onto the continents. 
The basic features of the fossil record, sudden appearance. There's an absence of transitions leading to the first appearance of a particular kind of animal. And the other feature is that fossils basically stay the same within their kinds. There might be some variations, but they're small compared with what is uh, to be anticipated if evolution from uh, amoebas to people happened. Evolutionists argue that the fossil record is incomplete, but this is no longer an adequate answer to this because we have millions of fossils that have been found. And the more fossils we find, the more clear it is that the transitions are missing. The idea of transitional species or missing links has been embedded in the public's mind for over 100 years. Most of the early finds have not withstood the test of time like Piltdown Man, Nebraska Man, and there are a lot of claims circulating today, but most of those, most of the current claims, fall into the creationist idea of variation within a kind. Um, if I were to pick three really famous fossils just from the last decade, I'd have to choose Ida, which was clearly a lemur. Puhila, which supposedly is the ancestor to seals, but which really looks like a modern otter. And Tiktaalik, which they tried to use as a club to beat the creationists over the head. But then some evolutionists found footprints of a four-legged animal in some rocks in Poland that the evolutionists had dated to millions of years older than Tiktaalik. So not only was Tiktaalik not transitional, but right now there's no candidate for that transition. What we do see is evidence for the creationist orchard where you get variation within a kind. You get a number of different horse species and these sorts of things. And so the horse fossil record fits in beautifully with the concept of a basic created horse kind developing into different species over time. Now throw into this mix what are called living fossils and the evolutionary picture gets quite fuzzy. I mean, these are fossils that are allegedly millions of years old yet look extremely similar to the supposed descendants that are still alive today. We've got horseshoe crabs that have been around in their basic configuration for what's claimed millions of years. Same with dragonflies, the coelacanth, and many, many other things. Now, if all these creatures have not changed over millions of years, where's the evolution? These cross supposed 500 million years of time, according to evolution. You have things like jellyfish and starfish and, and uh, all sorts of things that actually are the same today as in the fossil record hundreds of millions of years ago. And in that time frame, a worm has changed into you and me according to evolution, for which there's no fossil record showing that that happened. Now, a lot of people claim that maybe the animal is perfectly adapted to its environment, so it didn't need to change, but that is silly. I mean, some of those species have survived the greatest episodes of climate change and disaster in Earth history, like the supposed meteor that hit the Earth 65 million years ago and killed off the dinosaurs, or the end Permian extinction event where 99% of all species on Earth supposedly went extinct. There has been no constant environment in which to live in, during all of Earth history, so animals had to evolve to their surroundings in order to survive. But also, other species have supposedly been evolving ways to eat the older species, so how could they possibly have stayed the same as everything else changed around them? One major evolutionary icon is the alleged evolution of humans from ape-like creatures. But I don't know any paleontologist today that would be able to draw that smooth transitional series we saw in previous decades. There are so many supposed species in evolutionary tree of human history today, it's hard even to list them all. But let's just pick the most popular one, Neanderthal man. It was originally depicted as a half monkey, a distant relative, a real caveman. But today, everything has changed. Different paleontologists are trying to make the case that Neanderthal painted in caves, ceremonially buried their dead with their heads pointing towards the sunrise, made musical instruments, had the controlled use of fire, searched the landscape for rare minerals in order to make cosmetics. That is not the Neanderthal man I grew up with. And now that the genetics revolution is upon us, we've been able to construct five or six different Neanderthal genomes. There is strong evidence that modern man and Neanderthals interbred, meaning we are the same species by definition. Neanderthals are just a family group that lived in Europe and Asia after the flood. But the evolutionist says that these Neanderthal skeletons are tens of thousands of years old. 
but we're still finding DNA in them? As a geneticist, that's not supposed to be. That is shocking. But what's even more shocking is finding soft tissues and fossils that are supposedly much, much older. For about a decade now, there's been mounting evidence of soft tissue that's still preserved inside dinosaur bones. Now, if these bones are supposed to be millions and millions of years old, the soft tissues like blood vessels and red blood cells and other materials should have long since degraded. But starting in 2005, with the discovery of a dinosaur leg bone from Tyrannosaurus rex, there were these different soft tissues that were in there, and they were still stretchy. A blood vessel that could actually be taken with tweezers and stretched out would snap back into place. More material was discovered, different types of proteins have been identified in laboratories, and now there are mounting evidences coming in from a wide range of different types of fossil animals from the so-called age of dinosaurs. We've got Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, a duck-billed dinosaur, uh, even eggs from sauropod dinosaurs, those are the long neck ones, uh, from China. And so with mounting evidence now from not only North America, and not just one unit in North America, but from multiple levels of rock in the, in the record, and from different continents, soft tissue is being identified more and more by more researchers in paleontology. In 2013, a remarkable paper was published documenting the discovery of bone cells and DNA from dinosaur bone. Now, they proved the DNA with three independent chemical tests, and they also found DNA in certain parts of the cell, which is just what we'd expect to find if it was in a cell nucleus. Also, they found proteins called histones, and that's where DNA is coiled up in dinosaur cells. They would not be found in bacteria, so this rules out contamination. So the recent experiments on how fast DNA breaks down shows that even under ideal conditions, it would not last anywhere near the time since dinosaurs were meant to have become extinct. These ideal conditions are temperatures well below freezing. Now, in real life, dinosaurs were meant to have lived in very warm climates, and warmth means that DNA would decay even more quickly. Therefore, uh, the presence of DNA in dinosaur bones is very strong evidence against the millions of years time scale. 150 years after Darwin, the transitions are still missing, and the fossil record still doesn't reflect evolution over billions of years. But the rocks in which the fossils are found are often used as evidence for billions of years of time.